Hi there, my name is John Silver. I've been a professional artist all my life. And today I'm going to be showing you part two of how to paint a border collie using the two-part method. The first part was the monochrome. Now, we're going to be doing the glazing today and putting the colour on. So, let's get cracking. The colours I'm going to be using today are my basic colours I tend to use most of the time are the primary colours cadmium yellow, cadmium red and ultramarine with burnt umber, burnt sienna and some yellow ochre. I'm going to be using some um, alkyd titanium white and so uh, this is the Michael Harding warm white lead white alternative. Wonderful stuff. And our medium we're going to be using is Neo Megilp. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, after we damp our brush, is get some of this Megilp and just apply it to the entire painting. Like so. This gives it a nice binding. What we'll do is uh, it, it allows the paint to bind to the, uh, the underpaint. Get some tissue and just wipe off the excess so it's it's evenly spread across the surface. There we go. That's all that's needed for that. We're going to be doing a, um, a darkish green behind this so I'll get some of the negil. And we'll get some ultramarine in there. A little bit of cadmium yellow and yellow ochre just to warm it up a little bit. We can also add a little bit of burnt sienna to warm that up. Get some of it quite dark here. And just start playing this. It can be quite rough and ready the way you do it. I've got it fairly dark here because we need these light areas to really jump out at you. We can start coming a little bit lighter, a little bit of light to it now. Oops, lazy. Let's get a bit more yellow in there. little bits here and there. Go back to this dark and get a medium tone of using it now. Right, we need to go a little bit darker now. We can actually add Get this blue a little bit lighter, so it's almost like a bluey grey colour. Even lighter still. Hmm? And now comes the fun part. We're going to get a fan brush, a nice soft fan brush, and just blend all this. Most of the colour off it, and we can go over it again. See, so and it uh, takes those little brush strokes away. This is with oil paint, of course. Uh, you could do this much quicker, probably, with with airbrush if you were doing uh, acrylics. There we go. One green background. Now, just wash that brush. Bob Ross says beat the heck out of it. <laughs> I don't beat the heck out of my brushes. I tend to uh, look after them a little bit more than that. Not decrying Bob Ross. 
great up. It was a great month. Okay, now, uh, well, we've got that, that's it. I'll just wash that background brush. Don't need the green anymore. So always have plenty of paper towels. And actually, a good old cloth rag is very good for cleaning brushes. Much better than paper towels. Paper towels are used to get the excess off. But a good soft cloth will really make sure those bristles are nice and clean. Right, for this next part, we're going to do the uh, the lighter areas now the, the white areas of the of the coat now we're going to put the shadow areas in first now these are going to be of a purpley hue uh, yeah purple a warm purple color so I'll get some white in there some ultramarine and this we're going to use a little bit of burnt sienna so these are the darker areas Shadow of the uh, the coat. I'm just generally going through this. It doesn't matter if some of the areas of grey, the underpainting, show through. That doesn't matter at all. Just here and there. You could paint it so that none of those areas were showing. But it, I find it quite nice. Uh, those little layers can sometimes be visible. Lighten that up now, touch. Go to the next layer, and we'll just add a little bit of cadmium red to this, so it's going to be slightly pinkier now. You see that it's gone a little bit red. I'm letting the uh, rough bristles of the brush do the work. You see, they're looking like it's doing lots and lots of fur, lots of hair strokes. But in actual fact, you're not doing each individual hair, but it makes it look like you are. Mid-tone here where the light's just coming into the middle ground of the muzzle. Yep, I'll clean this brush off. I always have two pots of uh, thinners or brush cleaner. One to get the most off the brush and then the other one you generally try to keep clean is just for the final cleansing of the brush. So now we're going to mix a lighter colour of white which is pink basically. So we to add a little bit of that cadmium red in there just pink it up a little, that's a little bit too pink. Get in there. Just lightly dust that off. Take most of the paint off that. And we'll just start to slightly blend this into the area here. One or two hairs will be catching the light. And that's the basis, or the basics of the light. Part of the coat going in. Use your fingers. Use your fingers to move things around. You can even blend with your fingers. Titian used to paint with his fingers in his later years. There was paintings he did completely with his with his hands. Right now we'll uh, another similar sort of a brush, soft haired brush. I was applying glazes. There's only thin colours, so you don't need to use bristle brushes. They're good for the impasto parts of it, especially the underpainting. And when we do the highlights on the top in white, then we'll go back to the bristle brushes. At the moment. Nice little soft brushes, like this, they're uh, quite worn as you can see. That's, that's the beauty of worn brushes, is that don't throw your brushes away because they come in so easy. Right, so let's get uh, going with the, the darker areas now, so just damp that brush. 
I always damp the brush first, and then dry it off, because paint going on to completely dry hairs of a brush will tend to stick and be harder to remove and clog up the brush when you come to clean it. You'll never get it all out. So, I dampen it, it makes it a little bit easier to get all the paint out. Okay, now, so we need to have some of this. Megil. Now we're going to use ultramarine and burnt umber, which produces a nice dark tone. Now we'll have a little bit more ultramarine than burnt umber because we want a bluish cast to this, which is not far off. Too much paint, so you can get the paint and scrub this in. You're only putting thin layers on, you're not putting thick coats of paint on, just thin layers. We can go over the top of that. That's the whole idea of glazing, is you don't put thick layers on, just thin layers with a little bit more blue to that. Then we can start to refine it. Following, in some cases, some of the underpainting that we've done, some of the brush, some of the uh, brush strokes, so they follow those same lines. Now, we'll just get a. Uh, uh, this is this this kind of brush. It used to be a nice, very nice pointed brush, soft. But now it's getting this, at the ferrule there, the paint is built up in it, so it's spreading the bristles out a little bit more. So this is great for doing um, small areas of fur. Just let it spread naturally, you can even force it to spread. Now I'm going to do with this um, some warm areas of the fur. These are quite warm because the sunlight's trying to hit it so we're going to use a little bit of uh, an orangey sort of a colour let's see what that looks like 